I didn't know that I was going to be sharing on Gilgal, and the Lord initiated that. And uh, it really is something special for, you know, the Irish, and I think particularly even New Creation, because this was going to be their thing right after Ireland. And um, um, so my notes were partial because I still had time when we were working on Esther, which, as you can see, we had, would have had a lot of time for me to get the notes ready. And uh, I wanted to go out with you today, and, and uh, so uh, a lot of it is in just written form that I may have to read, but I've had to also be in prayer and begin to shift for the people in Holland and in Belgium. So forgive me if it uh, sounds like I'm just doing reading, but I, I uh, really, I mean, there's going to be eight to 12 classes, I think, in, in Belgium. So. Oh, wow. Belgium. All right, let's do Joshua chapter 5. <clears throat> and I think we left off at verse 13. <clears throat> Does that sound familiar? Yes. It came to pass. It did. It came to pass. It finally came to pass. Praise God. Does that sound yes. encouraging? Yes. <laughs> yes it God is. knows what he's doing. Yes. And, uh, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, notice that he's alone, <clears throat> that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Now, I want to I use Joshua now, not as Jesus, but as a leader. You're all, you know, we have many leaders here, and many of you will be leaders in the future. And there are things here that are very important to that, that pertain to, to the Lord and to his uh, work in you, and then his work through you. And now his his work through you depends on his ability to work in you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can be a, a, a pastor or whatever of a, any kind of church out there and not have the proper work done in you. Mm -hmm. The Lord knows what you need. I don't know all you need. But that's why we go to the scriptures and we find things like this. And uh, so this is Joshua, and he's gone alone, and he's going to check out Jericho because that's going to be, remember, this is the launching pad for everything that's going to happen to take the land. This is the big deal here. God hasn't even talked a whole lot about um, when you possess the land, per se, but he, but there there is that. So there's... This preparation was for the first step, Jericho, and then it's going to be for the rest of their lives, the things that are coming up. And uh, so he's going, he, you know, Joshua was a, a man of war. I mean, he was, he was the leader of the armies. And um, <clears throat> so he's going out to check out the fortifications that are there and to see what he can find out militarily or strategically. And um, while he's there, he runs into this man. The scriptures, you know, just say that, that uh, he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man. And there's two things that I noticed about that, was that his, the man's sword was drawn and in his hand. And the other thing was that the scripture says that he was over against him. Mm. Yes. Right? So yeah. you're looking at that and, and, uh, and it's two negative things. You know, it's not yeah. like, yeah. oh, this is good. And the guy with the sword didn't put it up and run hug him. Mm -hmm. And so he says, you know, are you for us? Are you for our adversaries? 
Well, I mean, I don't know what this guy looked like, but it sounds like he sounded a little formidable. Because Josh was going, uh, are you for us? <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm hoping you're going to be on our side. And, and it's clear from the, the sound of his voice and the things that he says and maybe his body language that uh, he, he wasn't particularly for Israel. In fact, how does he say that? Um, are, art thou for us or for our adversaries? And so, verse 14, and he said, this is the name of the sword drawn, nay, but, okay, so there's, let's, let's just consider nay, but. Those are two negatives. <laughs> it's not like he, he's like, yes, oh boy. You know, this is nay, but. And that's all you got to say to somebody that will put you on the defensive if you yeah. don't know where they stand, you know. Yeah. And uh, he says, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. Wow. I got chills. Not from that. As captain of the Lord of hosts I have now come. They haven't taken any land in the, in the ground, in the land yet. Joshua had led them all the way through. You remember when they were fighting the Amalekites. The Amalekites. The Amalekites. Joshua's down there in the valley fighting them, but Moses is up there on top of the mountain with Aaron and her. <laughs> <laughs> or was it her? <laughs> He's up there with Aaron and her holding up his arms, and as long as his arms stayed up, they won. But Joshua's leading. Yeah. He's the point of the spear. Some of you understand that point of the spear. <clears throat> and so all of a sudden this guy shows up and he says, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I come now? Am I come now? I've come now. Mm. How many of you think that's significant that he says now? Yeah. Lord speaks to you or shows up and he says da 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 now then you need to go I gotta listen because this is right now I, can't, I don't have time to meditate on this or go home and pray I need to start moving with what I'm hearing right now and Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him what saith my Lord unto his servant so, the, so the, this man begins with those two words, two negatives. I'm not for Israel. And I'm not for Israel's enemies. But he's for the Lord only. He's only for the Lord. This is good. This is really good. You can side with the, the people you love the most, your family or friends or whatever. You can side with them. You can side against people that are enemies to you. But there's only one person, one being, one side, as it were, that you need to be on. Because the ones you love or the ones that are, you know, your friends or whatever may be all of that. But the Lord may need to deal with them, and you need to be on his side to let him deal with them instead of protecting them with your sword. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank Come you. on. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Now, maybe some of you haven't dealt with that yet, but some of you have. And you have to be on the Lord's side. And that's being on your loved one's side. Amen. It is. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, if you're protecting them, you will not be much of a leader. I'm serious. If you're just protecting them, then you're protecting them against the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you may be protecting them against his sword. And his sword is, has purpose to it. Mm -hmm. 
We have to give him full, full leverage. <clears throat> so I wrote this. This is a change from how things were in Egypt and in the wilderness journeys. Heretofore, God had been for Israel against his enemies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, he did. He took yeah. down all the enemies that came up. But now, it's time to grow up, Joshua. It's time to grow up. It's time to not just hear teachings or this or that. I realize, you know, I really do. I realize it's hard to apply some of these things when you're not in it. Yeah. Because when you're really in it, it hits you. You go, oh. I mean, you can, sometimes you hear it and you go, oh, I've messed up in that realm. Sometimes you hear it and you go, um, yes, Lord. Sometimes you hear it and you go, you've been dealing with me on that. Do it, Lord. Mm -hmm. But if you're not in it, I understand. It can just, you know, it doesn't have any strength at all. But I guarantee if you get in a situation later when you're in the leadership of some kind and um, and God wants to deal with your church, your loved ones, your husband or wife, your this or that, you need to be on the Lord's side. Mm -hmm. You do not need to be jumping on their side when it's when when the choice is between the Lord and them. Mm -hmm. Who are you gonna pick? Amen. No, Ghostbusters. <laughs> you're gonna pick you're gonna pick the Lord's side for their good. For their good. So this is hard to see him go through this. Trust me, I understand. This is hard. Uh, some of us have gone through that with our, our children. It's just hard to see them go through this. And you gotta, you got to give them to the Lord. you got to entrust them to the Lord. That's just an example. There are so many examples of this. <clears throat> so, it's different now because the Lord had always been on your side against your enemies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he says, whose side are you on when he's dealing with you? When he's dealing with you, whose side are you on? Your own or his? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we say, I don't know. He's got a sword in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking. Don't rush me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But right. honestly, you get down the road, you're not going to be worth anything <coughs> until you can say, I'm on your side. Swing, Levi, swing. Mm -hmm. Some of you know the meaning of that. Amen. God said at a certain time after the uh, Mount Sinai, he come down and said, who is on the Lord's side? Mm -hmm. Who is on the Lord's side? And the tribe of Levi said, we will. And he says, every man strap your sword on and go through the host. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And swing, Levi, swing. Right. We go. But this is the people you say to get out of Utah. No, no, no. Just do what I'm telling you. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't understand. We don't, you know. But there is a. That's what. If he's saying that to you, he's saying, <clears throat> he's saying, who is on the Lord's side to your being? Your heart and your spirit says, mm -hmm. we are on the Amen. Lord's side. Then he's going to say, well, y'all go through and right. cut out all flesh. Swing away. Swing away. There are, right. folks, there are people that they like themselves too much. Got real quiet, didn't they? <laughs> I think those people are in here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's, you know, but if, if you're going to go for the Lord, and if you can't do it in you, and you got no business trying to do it to somebody That's else. So Amen. Lord, I want you to deal with any part of me that you want to deal with. Amen. Amen. Or how about this? I'm being honest. How about this? Lord, 
I don't know if I'm quite ready for that. I'm asking you to deal with everything up to that, and I believe maybe I'll be more ready, but I want to be ready, and I'm Amen. not putting, I'm not making an excuse out of this. I just, you know, and he says, it's okay. We'll make an appointment for tomorrow, right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time's up. <laughs> no, but, it, you know, he might go... <laughs> Two weeks, two months, two years. You know, he knows that. You know, there's another thing that happens with us, and that is we somebody's preaching something and we and we're really being moved by that and everything, and maybe it's his a dealing with some portion of your flesh, and um, and so you go, Oh God, I want you to deal with this, deal with it. And a week later you haven't dealt with it. Oh Lord, deal with it. I mean, I had this happen to me. Oh, Lord, deal with it, you know? And he goes, Lord, I'm not ready to deal with that. You're not ready. Stop praying over that. Start praying over this. Because I'm ready and you're ready for this. But we, you know, I know it can sound funny, but it can be a religious thing that we jump on everything that, you know, we just say, Lord, you know, to, I've done this for years and years and years and years. When it comes to this kind of stuff, it's like I have a table between me and God, mm -hmm. and I spread out everything I can. I spread it all out and say, what do you want to touch? You, you put your finger on it, and we'll go. <laughs> it really works for me. I know that sounds crazy. It really, really, really works for me. Just put your finger on it, and we'll go, you know. I don't know. Right. You know, and I go, I think you're going to do it, and then his hand's over here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's so cool. And we say, okay, yeah. let's go. Or we say, you know, I really need that fixed because I'm fixing me a situation in a week, and I need that done. Yeah. And he goes, no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Who's on the Lord's side? You say, I am. <clears throat> I am. That's not an ethereal thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am on the Lord's side. You have to be on the Lord's side when it's not easy to be on the Lord's side. Mm -hmm. Against you, against your loved ones, against Israel, if you will. The Israel of God. So, so the, the man with the sword, now he is against anything that does not have its priority to being after what the Lord is after. The Lord of hosts is now, this is, his, this is where he's at. He's against anything that does not have what's the Lord's priority, what the Lord is after. I'm on that side all the time, whether the priority changes at the moment or whatever. But I don't see, well, I, if I could just have more structure, Lord. Hmm. The structure is the Lord. You have to find the structure of the heart of the Lord. That's the, that's the structure. You know, well, I don't like to be rushed. Well, hmm. you shouldn't drag your feet there. Amen. Can I do this? Yes, you can. Amen. Shouldn't drag your feet then. Stay up. Walk with the Lord. Yes. Didn't it say Noah did that? He walked with God? Yes. Didn't it say Enoch walked yes. with God? Yeah. Just keep pace with him. It takes a while to get that pace because you got some big legs, long legs. <laughs> you know, you get with him. You say, I want to be with, I want to meet with you stride for stride. And I want, and if you turn, I want to. Have you ever seen butterflies uh, in the spring and they go like this yeah. and they just move and you go how can they move it's not like they're one of them whoops you know no, it's like amazing they just you know and they go all around and everything but they're just like a like a ballet or something you go how do you know the movements the other one's gonna make well for butterflies I guess it's in them for us we have to be geniuses. <laughs> no, it's got to be in us. <laughs> these, these are things important to pray for. These are things 
to keep it for the Lord. We all can use this. So this man is the captain of just such a people, a people that want only what the Lord wants. What is that saying? Israel, you need to evaluate your priorities. Everything's changed. Now it's about the land, God's land. Now it's about the follow through with him, God's instructions. It's no longer about wandering. Well, let's go this way because it doesn't matter. Or I say this matters, but it doesn't because you're just wandering in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. <clears throat> Joshua fell to the earth as if this man's words slew him. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You're not on our side or the enemy's side. I have always been on our side. Mm -hmm. I never perceived that I <clears throat> shouldn't be on, not on our side, but on the Lord's side. <laughs> you know, it never occurred to me. Whoosh, swing, Levi. Plop down. Up to this time, Joshua had been head of the army, and it was his methods they used for fighting. Mm. Did you get mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Up to this time, Joshua had been head of the army. Remember, we're just using Joshua now, not as Jesus, but the leader. He had been head. Well, I'm, a, I'm the pastor. I can do anything I want. Really? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. You're an under shepherd. There's a great shepherd, and that great shepherd's so great, he'll lead you to the altar. Mm -hmm. Up to this time, Joshua had been head of the army, and it was his methods they used for fighting. Mm. And God comes in, and I've seen this. I have seen this, and some of you that have been around me for years have watched our fellowship change. Man, you get stuck on what worked. This is what worked for the first seven years. This is what worked. So we're going to do it this way forever because it's you know it works. And then God starts changing things up, and we go, well, you know, you this is you know why are we leaving that? I mean, um, we're used to that. There is no why or we're used to. You go with him. You have to go with him. And it's the best thing, either for individuals or for the group, that you stay with, with him and it, and it reforms. It, it moves into another direction and feel and everything about it. And if you're not flexible, God's going to be gone before too long. Amen. No, it's the truth. I don't know how long I've been in the ministry, but I'm 70 and now, let's see, I was 23, 22 when I graduated from Bible school. And got immediately put into a situation in a foreign land where I was pastor of two, three churches, I can't remember anymore. Two churches, two churches in the prison, prison and the school. All kinds of stuff. There's a lot. Just a young guy straight out of Bible school. And go, I don't know what's going on. He said, but I do. Oh, oh yeah, it seemed really hard until you said that. <laughs> no. Amen. Amen. But see, that's being with him. Yeah. Right. I'm with you. You know, this is my flock. Oh. This is my Lord. This is my life. Yeah. This is forever. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> follow me while I follow Christ and will that work at all? You know? But I'm following him. That's right. mm -hmm. And that's where my heart is and that's where my dedication is. Mm -hmm. So Joshua, now he was not only replaced, but lay on the earth as one slain. 
It's a difference between being replaced and slain. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I can see the, the man with the sword. I got, I got some news for you. You're not in charge anymore, and you're dead. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Yes, Lord. Can you serve me being dead? Amen. <clears throat> That's it. Yes. You're not in charge anymore. That's right. Your methods, your direction. I have great mm. sense of Praise direction. Praise God. Not Mountain even anymore. <laughs> the deal is, can you hear from God? Can you be with Him? Can you love Him? Can you? Can you? Uh, every any slight difference in His breath touches you somehow because you begin to know Him and you realize. You know, this this means we're about to rise up, or this means we're about to move, or whatever. I mean, it's should we not be pursuing the Lord yes. mm. more than anything else? Yes. And love that more yeah. than anything else. Mm. And love him more you know, I know pastors who love being a pastor. Mm. I know pastors who hate being a pastor. I'm not talking about death, no. I'm talking about Ben. No. <laughs> <laughs> Deb pointed to me and said, and said you. Because I don't love being a pastor. I'll tell you what, it's tough. It is. And it's always, there's always a problem or something. There's always this or that. I'm, you know, if I'm a pastor, it's only because of the life of the Lord. Really? Because that's the only thing that can keep me together. Really? So, as long as it's him, I'm okay. That's right. You know, but I, I step outside of those bounds, and when I do, it's like, ah! <laughs> scary out there. <laughs> There's sheep out there. <laughs> those scary sheep. Big <laughs> pointy teeth. <laughs> I remember at one time, y'all probably remember this when I said, I feel like I'm shepherding a flock of wolves. <laughs> Do you remember me saying that? <laughs> you know, no offense to y'all. Sorry. Of course. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. A bunch of hollers at the moon. Like, huh? But the wolf's supposed to lay down with the lamb. Amen. <sighs> and when they don't, Shepherd lays down with the lamb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've done it time and time and time again. Wow. Life comes out of death if we believe that, and it's Him and it's His Spirit, and I'm doing it in that Spirit. But that's the best chance, then, if they're not going to do it, of resurrection coming forth mm -hmm. the life of Christ. In so, mm -hmm. you know, it's the old draw the line. Jesus says, Who's, who'll die with me? You know, some of you have heard this, not all of you have. But over the years, there have been many times I've stood there waiting for somebody in the fellowship to step over the line. I go, okay, I'm good, you know. And after about 15 times, I don't even, have, I don't even look around anymore. There's no line. <laughs> even, even, I mean, even if there's other people stepping over, I don't even look around anymore. I just go, I'm I'm up to bat. I'm ready. Well, it's going to be death and loss, and you know people are going to think bad of you, and this and that and that. Look at Jesus on the cross. Look what He went through. Look what His life will go through in us. What? How can I claim His life and believe that it's His life, but I don't want to go through anything like that? Rejection. Mm -hmm. I'm not rejection. <laughs> well. I mean, I haven't been an orphan, you know. We were taught, we were, I just recently I saw my older brother, he'd even come to Texas, and, and uh, we were talking about, you know, the rejection and all these things that we felt, and Deb brought up the fact that, you know, when I was in the orphanage, my mom and stepfather and youngest brother and sister, they would come, and we would have a good day. We'd get to go out and have a picnic at the park, but then they'd bring us back to the orphanage, 
And that's when my mother would kneel down and she would hug me and say, I love you, and then get up and walk off. Mm -hmm. And so I started equating yeah. someone saying they love me with they're going to be gone. Don't say. I used to say, don't, don't say you <laughs> love me. I didn't want to hear it because it was like, because you're just going to walk off, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it'd be great if my mom said, I love you, you know. And, but it was always at the end. And it's like, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle someone saying that because it just threw me into a dither. I don't know why. But, you know, it, those things that happening in you when you're just a little boy. Well, Jesus can say he loves me all he wants. The Father can say he loves me all he wants. That's, that's fine. Because he's not talking to me. He's talking to the life. He loves his son, and I love his son, and I want him to get his son, and it's not about me being loved. That's right. Is that okay? Yes. 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 I mean, it was freeing for somebody yes. like me who went through what I... It was actually freeing when they said, it's not about you, and you're dead, but Christ can live in you, and when the Father hugs you, he's really hugging his son, but you get a hug too. Amen. No, right. actually nobody said that. I said that. That's how I perceived it. <laughs> That's how, that was how I perceived it. And I said, this is great. This is great. And it's still great to me. <laughs> it's just like, good, I'm dead. Amen. Is that too weird for you? No. <laughs> Some of you are looking like, are we done yet? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Uh, Joshua was not only replaced but lay on the earth as one slain he called the man with the sword Lord and now he is only a servant wow. did you see the wording of it? where'd it go? Uh, uh, yeah What's, uh, what saith my Lord unto his servant mm. but he did worship and said unto him he fell on his face and did worship and said unto him what saith my Lord to his servant? Mm -hmm. Whoa. Where is that? I mean? Now, he, well, I'm looking right here. Now he's again, um, uh, this man is the captain of the Lord's host. Up to this time, Joshua had been head of the army, and now it's the, uh, and it was his methods in fighting. Now he was not only replaced, but lay on the earth as one slain. He is he called the man Lord, and now he is only a servant. Joshua, my Lord, Joshua has been promoted from captain to servant. Wow! Praise God! Yes. <laughs> Orientation, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And it's Amen. he's not going, no, no, no. <laughs> the people won't respect me. They'll be warriors and I'm servant. I don't want to be low. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will say, you're about as low as the guy. <laughs> she yeah. said all that stuff. <clears throat> He's, he has been promoted from captain to servant. For Joshua, this mortal wounding, as if he slew him, and new status was not, uh, was not, has not been rejected, but brought forth worship from his Praise Lord. Praise God. Thank Amen. you, Lord. I worship you for this. That's right. Yeah. Amen. See? Why Thank this Lord. position and status and all that? Why is it so important? I understand it's important to the world. I do. But I understand that there are these crazy people, like Joshua, that's willing to throw it to the wind and say, I'm going after you, Lord. I want you. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And people will look at you as crazy. And people will go, are you? Or they'll say, well, you can't do that. You can't do that. Or your mind will say, don't do it. And your spirit will say, shut up. That's right. Amen. 
<laughs> I mean, it's true. It really is. And any of you guys ever experienced that before? We got two right here, and they're young, <laughs> so we ought to have experienced it many times before. I told Chris, I said we've all experienced the 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 weirdness of going from nominal church beliefs and ways to Christ okay. and Him crucified and going, your head's going, yeah. I don't understand this teaching at all, but my spirit's going, yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going, how do I ever get these to match up? It's going to get a renewed mind. Amen. But it's, it's something we all have had to go through. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Indeed. So Joshua 5, 15 now, verse 15. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. The new captain tells Joshua to loosen his shoes from his feet, strictly because the place where he stood was holy ground. The captain You know, I wonder if we can always recognize holy ground. Yeah. I mean, we need to get better at it. Mm. We need to learn to recognize what God, the captain, says is holy ground. Because mm -hmm. we may just say, well, you know, yeah, that was real good or something. You know, we don't have to understand everything, but we need to get the spirit. See, the the... The captain, the man with the sword, didn't tell Joshua that you um, need to understand everything that I'm telling you. You, Right now, you need to realize that this is holy ground. This isn't a takeover. This, you know, somebody taking over. And, you know, this isn't uh, just a good service. That's what right. we're doing here, this yeah. is the captain of the host right. talking to the man who had been the captain, the, the man that Moses stepped down and gave this to and said, you'll be the one to lead them in, needs to find out what holy ground That's is right. and stop playing around with, with the holy stuff. Right. I don't care how good you can swing a sword. That's right. Wow. <laughs> I don't care how good you can swing a sword, preach the word. No. We need to be able to get low and recognize when we're in the midst of it and be, and be ready to be on our face and get our boots off. It's interesting wording here, because uh, according to the previous verse, Joshua is no longer physically standing. The new captain must be referring to his spiritual stance as far as how he was relating to the new change of status. For the place wherein thou standest, he fell to his face. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to admit that. It says that. Mm -hmm. he's, all, he's on his face. And the captain of the host of the Lord says to Joshua, the place wherein thou standest. We also have to learn to hear. Or we'd just read through this. Or if we were in that situation, we would hear him say it and not really understand mm -hmm. where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. Or even if there was some sort of a, 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 a inconsistency. And well, I'm already down here, so how I was saying I'm standing, we might not even notice the two differences there. Yeah. I mean, this whole thing is a process of, it's not a process of us getting better or smarter or are more, uh, it's not even a process of us getting more spiritual. It's a process of, I don't know, how, pressing into the Lord 
bleeding into the Lord. I don't even know how to put the right words. Where, where, you, do you remember what Ruth said to Naomi? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Does anybody remember it well enough to quote it? Treat me not to leave thee. Where you go, I go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Where you die, I die. Where God will be there. Cleave, you, where you go, I go. Your God will be my God. What else? Your people, will be, your people will be my people. Where you are buried, I am. Where you're buried, I'm buried. Woo! That's called good news. It's called good news. That's what your goal is. Your goal isn't to become some sort of spiritual giant. Please don't go that direction. Please, please, please. We don't want to be spiritual giants that walk to the land of the puny. <laughs> I know the Lord and you don't. For I have wisdom from above. And thou art stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like Jedetut. <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, sessions? Five sessions Jedetut's name. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's very cool. He's, you know, he's a, he's a wiry rascal. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> he's a frog in one of them. Uh, now, I've never met the guy. Or have I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the new captain must be referring to his spiritual stance as far as how he was relating to the new change of status. The new captain commends Joshua in his discovery that the lowest place on earth is actually holy ground in the eyes of the Lord. Praise Amen. God. Orient. Mm -hmm. Orient. Orientation. Orientation. Our orientation is off as Christians. It is off. We think higher is better. And God thinks lower is better. Mm -hmm. So, that was, that was a great little sentence there. The Lord gave all of this. Yeah, sure. Uh, the new captain commends Joshua in his discovery that the lowest place on earth is actually holy ground in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. okay. That he's standing spiritually in the spirit of that holy ground. Mm -hmm. Wow. He fell on his face immediately. Mm -hmm. He didn't get high. He didn't draw his sword and get into a sword fight. Mm -hmm. He fell. He fell on his face. Mm -hmm. And the captain of the Lord's host says, the place where you're standing, mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. in this lowly place, mm -hmm. is holy ground. Wow. Your spirit is standing on the holy ground of loneliness. Mm. By the Lamb, by the Lamb. Not mm. just, not as an attribute all by itself. Mm. Amen? Yeah. But by the Lamb. But is, is that amazing? Yeah. Have you ever looked at the holy ground situation like that? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Holy ground in the eyes of the Lord. I'm going to read it again. Can I? Yes. Yes. The new captain commends Joshua in his discovery that the lowest place on earth is actually holy ground in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Wow. All right. So I'm going to address the, the doubters. <laughs> if it was an actual reference to the dirt, Holy ground. If it was an actual reference to the dirt where these two figures were, there were no memorials erected mm -hmm. and no future mentioned of how holy that physical place was. Mm -hmm. Any, 
Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to think through this because all of a sudden I realized he's talking about the place where you stand and he's laying there on his face. Mm -hmm. I'm going, something doesn't jive here. I need to know what this is because it seems out of balance. It's, something's not balanced, but it wasn't. I was mm -hmm. out of balance. I couldn't see yeah. because I'm too too much looking at the material mm. realities when God is looking at the spiritual realities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Almost done here, actually. Yeah. I'm gonna read that one again also. If it was an actual reference to the dirt where these two figures were, there were no memorials erected. And you know that they just erected a bunch with 12, yeah. stones. 12 stones, yeah. 12 stones. And no future mention of how holy that physical place was. Because it wasn't the physical That's place. Right. It was the holy wow. ground of falling on your face and standing there and wow. being and being in the in the Lord's eyes and God's eyes, that's holy. Now that's holy that's ground. So yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. But if it is referring to the holy ground Joshua just entered into spiritually, meaning, because see, it's not just that he fell down. It's not just that he fell down on the ground. It's that he fell down and he said, what was it? My Lord, you know, I, you know, um, Joshua fell on his face and did worship. He fell down on his face. He worshiped and said, what saith my Lord to your servant? And God's going, man, this is real holy ground because we got a lot of, lot of the stuff working here. We got four separate things that are working here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's perceiving it. God is perceiving it as holy ground. So, I'll read that one again because I don't think I finished the sentence. But if it is referring to the holy ground Joshua just entered into spiritually, that ground will continue to exist and be considered holy by and inside of Joshua. Mm -hmm. I, I'll read it again. Yeah, yes. please do. Amen. Maybe for this side. Amen. No. <laughs> but if it is referring to the holy ground Joshua just entered to, into spiritually, that ground will continue to exist and be considered by Joshua and inside of Joshua. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It'll be holy ground forever. And he'll recognize it as holy ground. In other words, he did then, but what if that was just an event? Mm -hmm. We have events. Absolutely. We go through physical time events, and then it just is an event that passes, and we refer back to it and say, oh, remember when that happened to me? You know. But this will be holy ground that he carries with him forever. And he'll know how to enact that holy mm. ground. Mm. You know, it's like the Jews. Uh, when they get ready to pray, they face the east, and they put down a mat, and they bow down, and they bow, there's a certain bow down, they bow down, and they bow down, and they pray towards Jerusalem. This is that, mm -hmm. this is the real mm. holy mat. <laughs> This is the real one. It's the real one. Amen. The real one. Where instead of facing Jerusalem, we're facing east. They're just on their face. They're not facing east. They're on their face. And they're saying, I am your servant and I'm glad to be here. Mm -hmm. And you're the Lord. <coughs> And I worship you in my lowliness. I worship you in your beauty and your greatness. 
And the Lord says, this is holy ground wherein you stand. Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're like, you're like the, the, the priests in the Jordan holding up the Ark of the Covenant. And you, the place you stand, God's going, those 12 stones under those guys. <laughs> We got to break them out of there. We got to bring them over into the resurrection side. They are in death. And the priests stood firm, firm in that death and in that lowliness, in the nature of Christ. Stood firm in it. And that's exactly what Joshua's going to do. This is just the beginning for Joshua. Hmm. You do realize that just shortly before this, Moses checked out. Yeah. Just, it wasn't that long Joshua. before this. Moses had been running everything. This is a good start mm -hmm. for, a young, for a young leader. Because he's putting himself right in line. Right in line. And, and uh, he will have learned from the Lord speaking to him and saying that that's holy ground out there in which you stand. That's amazing. That's well, can you imagine the Lord being amazed over it? We always go, God goes, that's holy ground, sucker. You need to figure this out. No. The Lord's going, you are on your face and you're worshiping and you're you're taking the lower seat when you've been the leader the whole, you know, as far as over the armies the whole time. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's, take your shoes off because this is holy ground mm -hmm. where you stand. Mm -hmm. Well, what if he's doing that with you and I? What if, yeah. he's, what if, what if when he saw that spirit he saw the spirit of the lamb. He saw the spirit of his son. He saw the, the selfless one. He saw the, the self-giving one to the mm. nth degree, obedient unto death even. Mm. And every time he saw it, what if in his heart the father said, that's, that's holy ground that you're standing in. Mm. That's really holy ground. Mm. But what if every time he looked at the times when we said, no, I can do this job better than you. Don't be pushing in on my territory. Your territory? And you're working in the ministry? I thought it all belonged to God. Mm. I thought we were doing this for him. You're, mm. you know, lay it, out, lay it down. Give it if Amen. necessary. Lose. Lord, Lord, let it be. Orientation. Lose that they might gain and bless them, mm -hmm. even while they're cursing you. Mm -hmm. I bless you. I love you. I'm dying for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, couldn't you say that? I'm, yes. You know what? I'm, I'm dying to this, and I give it to you with all my heart. Mm -hmm. That's true. And yes. the Father's going... Mm -hmm. Out there is holy ground. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't think he talks like a Texan, but he did tell us to reckon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be, you know, little Texan anyway. I don't guess you can be a little Texan. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, the boots will make you taller. <laughs> yeah. All right. Almost done here. Actually, this is the last sentence. The picture immediately moves from this thing to God going, giving instructions to Joshua. God is now giving the instructions. We're going to take Joshua. We're going to do it this way. Every place is going to be different. Every place we go to. Because I want it to be different. This is God's speaking. I want it to be different because... In each place you will learn to trust in me, to hear from me, to, to be in tune with me. So, so this one we're going to march around. We ain't going to march around everything and shout on the seventh time around. Blow trumpets. 
We're going to use different things every time so that you always come back to me and you say, what are we going to do now, Lord? Because I'm just serving you. I'm just serving you in this way. So after all of this is over, God starts giving him all the instructions for the next, for the first big push, which is huge. The first big push. When you take that land, you know that there's a sense we can take it all then. You take, take Jericho and what do you come away with? Rahab. Rahab. Mm. Rahab the harlot. The least in the whole mm -hmm. town. <laughs> I mean, even if, I'm not even sure. Is it in the, the uh, genealogy also? The, just, yeah. In Matthew. The, in Matthew, this is the genealogy of Christ. And it's, it's talking about Ruth, who's a Moabitess, who this law said, do not yeah, join with Moabites to the 10th generation and this is early on, and, and Rahab is a harlot in the city, and yet she puts the, the, the red cord out and says, I'm with you guys. And they said, okay. And, and is in the genealogy of Jesus. Jesus is. And there's women in that genealogy. Thank you, Jesus. Well, there is. Well, there's most genealogy. Oh, we're only going to put the men because they're important because we're from Texas. No. <laughs> no, but that, you know. I mean, there are women in there. And, of course, it gives men who think that way more fodder because, you know, it's a Moabitess and Rahab the harlot. And I'm trying to think of who Tamar. else. Tamar. Tamar. Oh, man. You know, so we're going, you know, well, what are they doing in there? They ain't got no right. Bathsheba. 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 No right according to the law. Mm -hmm. You know who Bathsheba is, right? The one who mm -hmm. took a bath? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not according to the law. Because <coughs> according to the heart of God, if you got holy ground working in you, because they were lowly, they were, they were lowly. There was no reason to accept them except that the Lord saw something in them that would, can I put it this way, bring forth Christ in the genealogy. Remember, we talked about the genealogy in the genealogy. Part of that which together brought forth Christ. Yeah. Pull them out. The genealogy is just broken. And where does it go from there? Right? It's a space-time conundrum. <laughs> where does it go from there? They're absolutely necessary. Christ is not going to be brought forth. You pull them out. They're just as important as any other member. If we're going to get Christ, they're just as important as every other member. We need them. We need to quit looking down on them. But to look down on them is to get off of holy ground. Yeah. Amen. That's the important thing. See, again, it's not, we shouldn't be squabbling among ourselves, but we do it because we're not on right ground with God. Yeah. We're off somewhere in ourselves. We're still too high. We're still yeah. too proud. We still got too much going for us. We still think that, you know, the whole world is waiting for me. The Lord is waiting for you. <laughs> Reckon yourself dead with Christ yeah. crucified. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm really waiting for you, buddy. Get up there with Jesus, you know. That's where I want you. Amen. And then that, just that last little bit of that sentence, the picture immediately moves from this scene to God giving instruction to Joshua, who is now God, God, Almighty God, giving instructions to Joshua, 
who is now least of all. <laughs> and he'll be the one bringing victory throughout the land. And, the, uh, and check it out in the Judges. It says, as, you know, when Joshua was in charge, it says the Lord was with them all the time. But a change came when they got to Judges. Okay, so let's, now let's put Joshua here in this picture. Let's put him here as Jesus. Now that we've looked at that way, Jesus made himself least of all. He made himself low, lower than the angels. He took upon himself the form of a servant. He became obedient, obedient unto death. And he led Israel in to take the land that God wanted. And all the time that that Joshua, Jesus, was the captain of the host through Loneliness through this spirit of the Lamb. As long as that was the case, then they had the victory. But as soon as it says, as soon as he died, it seemed like the Lord wasn't with him anymore. And then they kept having to get the Lord back. It was like he was gone. And then they mess up. And then y'all know the story, yeah. judges, don't you? I mean, it's up and down, up and down, kind of like your lives. But anyway, it's up and down. <laughs> up and down. I'm ready with the Lord. And then it's down. And then down. Oh, Lord, help me. And then, you know, just stay down. <laughs> and let the Lord be all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, down in the right spirit. Not down because you, you keep messing up and sinning and, you know, <laughs> in your flesh trying to do it all and all that kind of stuff. Just do like Joshua. Just do like that. Okay, you're the Lord and I'm the servant. That's right. What do you want? Okay. And when he gave him the instructions, I guarantee that the instructions were nothing like Joshua had been preparing all that time as, yeah. as, the, as, as the captain of the army of as the captain of the army of Israel. He gave it all up. You're the captain of the Lord of hosts. Well, what do we say? Do we pray? Do we... Come on. Why don't you get up here and... Anybody need any next? This has been holy ground just because of the man in which you have released your heart to soul and your spirit, your spirit, the living word, your son into us. And uh, there's, oh, there's so much seed in us because of your that deep desire for Christ in this generation. We, we release the, the surging rains and the breaking foundations, the power of the release of that we have experienced testifies one thing to us. You love your son. And you want him in us. You want him in us. Lord, the depth that your heart broke when he wasn't there and there was no hope of him being there for the mixture. Oh, we see that, that heart of yours opening. Opening in the same way it broke, but now opening with a passion to sow him back. Lord, you, you put the seed now, you put it in the ground. What kind of ground, Lord, is the question now? What kind of ground? Matthew 13, what kind of ground? Will the enemy come and steal it immediately? Will the carrier?
cares of this world just carry us away from what you've released into us. Well, thorns and things, just, just take it, take it, take it out. Father, it's a real question we've been thinking. But Father, what's sown in us now, we want to bring forth. Amen. To be fruitful, to multiply, to yeah. fill yeah. the earth yes, and Lord. the heavens and the under the earth and yes. all the heavens of the heavens with the fullness of your Son, Lord Jesus. Amen. From the journey through the ark to the wonder, Father, of new life, to the loneliness in the spirit of the Lamb, in real ways, and not preaching and teaching, but in release through death, his spirit. So Holy Spirit, you stirred us, you filled us. As we leave, we ask that you would now begin, begin, begin to ruminate on these seeds. Begin to bring forth Christ out of these seeds. Let me this not be the end. Oh God, forgive us for even thinking about it as an end. What happened was the seed went in the ground, so now it begins. Now it begins. Now it begins. What kind of ground? For now it begins. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for overshadowing these seeds until Christ comes forth. Thank you for the work that we cannot do, that you were sent to do in us. So, Lord, we, we cultivate that ground of our heart. We open it. We set our faith and we stand firm and we remove from ourselves and we go after it. Yeah. With a heart full of thankfulness and anticipation, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Cover each one, Lord, on the seed sown. Cover Randy and Debbie in the sacrifice poured out like a drink offering in our cups. We give you all the glory, Jesus. This is your life. It's you. We give you all the glory, Father, and all the glory, Holy Spirit. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.